Hey guys, today is going to be a very interesting video. It's another video request and the question is this. Why did God allow certain people in the Bible to have more than one wife? People like Solomon, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. So what does the Bible really say about having more than one wife? Polygamy. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. It's going to be a very interesting one. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. Now just very quick, if it's the first time that you're here on my channel, I'm Daniel Moretz and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle, where we preach biblical truth in a balanced way. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider it and also click that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Now, there are many cultures still today, even here in South Africa, that allow a man to marry more than one wife. But what does God's Word, the Bible, say about it? Well, if you read through it, there's not a specific verse that specifically say that polygamy is wrong. But when you read it all together, when you combine a few verses, you understand that it is not God's will. For example, 1 Timothy 3 verse 2 says, Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife. It doesn't say the husband of just a few wives. It says the husband of one wife. And even in the Old Testament, we see that God instructed the kings of that time not to have multiple wives. Deuteronomy 17 verse 14 says, when you come to the land that the Lord your God is giving you and you possess it and dwell in it and then say, I will set a king over me like all the nations that are around me. You may indeed set a king over you whom the Lord your God will choose. And verse 17 says, and he shall not acquire many wives for himself, lest his heart turn away. So why then did God allow certain people in the Bible like Esau, Jacob, Elkanah, David, and Solomon to have more than one wife. I mean, Solomon, who was very wise, had more, a lot more than just one wife. 1 Kings 11 verse 1 to 3 says, Now King Solomon loved many foreign women, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Moabite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women. From the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the people of Israel, You shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods." And then of course when you read the whole story of Solomon, you see that that is exactly what happened. The woman turned him away from God. Solomon clung to these in love. He had 700 wives who were princesses and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. Now, there's a huge lesson for all of us to learn here. Why did God allow Solomon to have 700 wives and 300 concubines and other people in the Bible more than one wife? Well, you need to remember, just because God allows something, it doesn't mean He approves of it. We do a lot of sin that He doesn't approve, but He allows us to do it because He gave us free will, free choice. So we make our own decisions. And so Solomon made his own decision. He knew it was wrong, but he still went ahead and he did it. And the consequence of his sin turned his heart against God. 1 Kings 11 verse 3 says, His wives turned away his heart. So you need to remember that God gave us free will. So He sometimes allows certain things, the things that we want to do, our fleshly nature, because a free will. If he didn't, he would not be a God of love because then he would control us like a robot. Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Now look, the Bible is full of things that God allowed to happen even if it wasn't in his will. Why? You need to understand that there's a big difference between God's permissive will and His perfect will. And from the beginning of Scripture, we clearly see that it was always God's plan for one man 
and one woman to be married. Genesis 2 verse 24 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, not wives, wife, and they shall become one flesh. The Bible always mentions one wife, not many wives or more than one wife, one wife. 1 Timothy 3 verse 2, Therefore an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife. Verse 12, let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. Titus 1 verse 6, if anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife. One of the biggest problems for especially young new Christians is this, tradition, culture versus God's word. Which one is the most important to you? Are you willing to follow God's word above your own culture and tradition, above everything else? Or is your culture, your tradition more important to you, even when God's word is against it or might be against it? Mark 7 verse 5 says, And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. This world and the traditions of men will pass away, but God's Word will stand forever. Are you a child of God? Do you truly love Him? Is He your life? If you truly love God, you will follow His Word, His commandments. Jesus says in John 14 verse 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, the aim for us as new believers in Christ is to follow God's word no matter what, above what men say. Our aim is to be more and more like Jesus Christ. And so we need to grow more spiritually. And if you want to grow, then please watch one of these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life in the Consecrated Lord to Thee